Okay, so we've created two blank layers or empty shape files that we're going to create our campground and campsites into. We should have a polygon shape file for our campground. We should have some points for our campsites. Uh, you've also already added the road layer and the U.S. Uh, Forest Service boundary layer into the map. And as you can see here, I've digitized the extension for the road. So that's already been put into uh, my road layer. We're going to go ahead and start digitizing our campground. So to get started, what we're going to do is open our editor toolbar. And if you don't have this already open on your map, you can right click in any gray area and it opens up all the available toolbars. And just make sure that editor is checked or checked editor and it'll open it up. Um, you can dock it up here. It might come in just floating loosely. If you just gray, uh, grab the gray bar, you can dock it up on your toolbars. All right, then go to the editor drop down, start editing, and you'll see that it opens a create features window. Now, if this doesn't open for you for some strange reason, you can go up to your windows and turn on this window. Um, but yeah, that should pop right open for you. Now, the row or the uh, uh, layers that are available for editing are put into a template for you. If for some reason your campsites and campground don't appear here, it's because you may have already started editing like I did. So ArcMap uh, creates an initial template for you of uh, files that are available for editing in whatever folder that you originally designated. So if you've added your campsites and campground later, you're going to need to create a new template. And you do this by uh, pressing the Organize Templates button, which opens a window where you can add a new template. So if you uh, click on that button, you want to check the new files that you want to make available. In our case, we want campground and campsites to be made available, and we'll just hit finish and close. It adds those to our Create Features window. Uh, okay, so it's that simple. Uh, if you click on campground, notice that we have a different geometry types. We have all three geometry types available to edit over here, and this is new to ARC 10. Uh, it was uh, designed to make our lives easier. Normally, you'd have to digitize into one, stop editing, start editing a new one, stop editing, now, anything that's in any given folder is available for editing all at once. You just have to be really careful that you're editing into the correct um, feature class. So if you had two uh, point files listed over here, or seven different point files, you need to make sure the right one is highlighted, because the one that is featured is the one that's going to receive the data that you're digitizing. So it'll be hard to mess that up with different feature uh, geometries in here, but if you had similar geometries, it can get confusing. Anyway, we'll click on campground, notice our construction tools down below, open up and populate with polygon tools. If we click on campsites, it gives us point tools. If we click on our road, it gives us line tools. So let's click on campground, we'll get our polygon tools, and then we get a crosshair cursor and we can just start drawing. So let's set up this map a little bit um, better for digitizing. When you're digitizing and creating data, you want to make sure you keep your map as simple as possible. Um, these base maps can be a little bit cumbersome because they're, they're sort of streaming in and they're not actually on your computer. That can sometimes bog down a little bit, um, but keep your map as simple as possible just to prevent crashes and, and issues. All right, so we need to get our polygon tool back, and then we can just start creating. Now, you're going to want to put a little thought into where you're creating your campground look at a topo map, look at the terrain, and, and figure out what makes the most sense. I'm just going to go quick. Um, this little feature construction box is also new to ARC 10, and I find it uh, slightly more than annoying. <laughs> I haven't learned to love this, this feature construction box yet. Anyway, you can see that it, uh, it's placing a series of vertices. When I get back to the beginning, I just want to double click to finish my sketch. And now I have a polygon, a campground layer. If I'm all done, I can stop editing, and it'll prompt me to save my edits. And now we can look in our campground attribute table, and you can see that we've created one polygon with absolutely no interesting information about it yet. But we can, uh, we've stopped editing, so we can add a field, call it area. I like to put the units in so that if I come back to it later, I remember. I'll put HA for hectare. Let's make it a floating point. And this is a little bit ridiculously big. If we right click on the area field, now we can calculate geometry. It's okay to do that outside of an editing session. We want area. 
but notice that you can also calculate perimeter or if we wanted to calculate the centroid of this polygon we could create a field that said x coordinate or something and another field that said y coordinate and we could cal actually calculate the exact center of this polygon but we're going to stick with area we've got the right coordinate system and we'll change this to hectare uh, I'm blind there we go and it populates it for us now our campground is supposed to be between 1.1 and 1.3 hectare, so I just got really lucky. Um, I'm on the low end, our total is 1.16. Um, let's just say that we uh, weren't happy with the shape of this though and we wanted to edit the shape of our campground. We can start editing again, bring up our tools. Oh, we don't actually need those, so forget I said that. We just need this little black, what's it called, the edit tool. If we double click on our polygon, it brings up our vertices and we can um, hover over and get the four-way arrow and just drag individual vertices like this. We can also, if we want to simplify, hover till we get the four-way arrow, right-click and delete vertices. Now notice it's got a ghost. We can see the, the ghost of where the polygon used to be. If we click off the shape, it sets our changes. So double-clicking again. Whoops. Um, what else can we do? If we want to, I don't know, add a vertice or a vertex for some reason, um, on the line, right click, you can insert a vertex and that'll allow you to change the shape. Even before you set this, you can do it again and create this shape to be whatever you want. Let's say we want to get rid of this one now. There you go. So that's how you can edit a polygon. The same goes for your polyline. Um, let's go to the road layer. We'll zoom to the existing road layer. If we wanted to edit this line, it's slow, slow. That's those base maps, they're, they're tricky. Get the edit tool and double click. You can see we've got a node here and we've got vertices here. If we wanted to remove any of these, it's the same thing. Hover till you get the four-way arrow, delete vertex, um, click off to set the change or we can put a vertex back in here and drag the line back to where we want it to be. Whatever change we want to make. Okay? So hopefully that's pretty clear. We can stop editing and save our edits. Now notice when we go back into campground that our original, even though we've changed the shape and size of our polygon, the area has not updated. So in a shape file, this will not update automatically for you. Um, you can right click and just update this. Just do the same thing. Area, check your coordinate system, make sure you've got the units correct, and it'll update the size for you. So now our polygon is actually too big. Um, we'd want to go back and make sure this is coming in between 1.1 and 1.3 hectare. So real quickly let's talk about the point file. We have a campsite file and we want to create uh, our campsite locations. Let's get our tools ready. We'll zoom to this to set this to the right extent. Let our base map draw for about five minutes. All right, we've got our point tool activated. And let's say we just wanna go ahead and put our campsites. Please feel free to make your campsite uh, more beautiful than this and more thoughtful, but at the very least, get your campsites placed. Then we can stop editing, save our edits, and go into the attribute table of our campsites. So remember you want to have campsite uh, identification in here and you need to include some other information like whether or not it has parking, whether or not it has access to the lake. And you can do this the same way you, uh, basically the same process as you do for area where, where you add a field and you can say uh, campsite ID. We can make that a short integer. That's too long, that's fantastic. Uh, let's see, we want a field for, let's say, water access. We'll make that text. And then, so I stop editing because you can't add fields. You can't add fields when you're in an active editing session. But now that we have our fields, we can start editing again. And then we can go through these this is point number nine, but we want that to be campsite number one. So just, just like that, we can go through and label all our campsites, give them a unique identifier, 
You can name them if you want, call them Sleepy Hollow or you know whatever you want these to be. Um, for your water, because you made it a text field, you should be able to just go in and type yes, no, yes, etc. Okay, that's how you add attribute information to a table. It's one way I should say. Um, and then you'll want to stop editing to save those edits. And that's it for this tutorial. Have fun.